Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us once again for the latest edition of Page One. I'm Bob Lorenz. Well, it should have been the marquee matchup of last week's WTA Tour event at Indian Wells. Two of the most recognizable faces in sports today. A primetime national cable audience waiting for a semifinal battle between Venus and Serena Williams. That is until just minutes before the match was to start. Venus pulled out with tendonitis in her right knee, defaulting the match to her younger sister and touching off a firestorm of criticism and suggestions that the Williams are predetermining the outcome or non-outcome of their matches. I'm just a competitor. I mean, how many people you how many people you know go out there and jeer a 19-year-old? I mean, come on, I'm not I'm just a kid. Serena and Venus Williams each heard booze last weekend, and not just because their highly anticipated matchup didn't happen. Instead, fans were voicing their disapproval at a theory that had moved as quickly as a Williams sister's serve. That Venus had withdrawn not because she was injured, but because the sisters themselves, or their father Richard, didn't want the pair to square off. And Venus had this to say after her second round victory at Key Biscayne yesterday, to quote, it's inevitable that we'll play each other again. It's going to happen and we have no issue with it. We both wanted to be professionals. We'll hopefully be one and two in the future. That's our goal. With time, everyone will see. And by the way, if you're wondering, they are not in the same draw at the Erickson Open, so if they meet, it will be in the final. And joining us to talk more about this now, Sports Illustrated tennis writer, you saw him in the piece, John Wertheim, and Rick Macy, who coached the Williams sisters from 1991 to 95, and has also coached Jennifer Capriotti and Mary Pierce. And Rick, I'm going to start with you. Do you feel there's any legitimacy to these claims at all that they're ducking each other or that their father, Richard, is predetermining the matches? Uh, no, I don't. You know, they, it, it's tough playing your sister, and these two girls are like two peas in a pod, you know, so it's a very difficult situation, and I think what's happened is they haven't been as competitive um, when they've played, and so that's the reason why people are speculating. But, John, they obvi people obviously scratch their heads. I mean, you go back to 99, Serena pulled out of Wimbledon five days prior with flu, five days before Wimbledon even began. Does that incident lend any credibility to what happened this last week? Well, I think that's part of the problem, that you sort of had this, maybe, maybe this boy who cried wolf effect, where there had been this history of sort of dubious pullouts and last-minute injuries. And, you know, for all we know, that injury was completely legitimate. But on the heels of half a dozen or so episodes of injuries that were a little more questionable, I, I think that's what caused some of the problem. Rick, you take us inside the family, because as we mentioned in the piece, not a lot of people know really what goes on in the inner circle there, especially between Richard, Serena, and Venus. What's that like, and, and how controlling is he? Um, well, you know, Richard definitely runs the show, but I'm going to tell you something. He's, he's done a great job. I mean, he's a, he's a great father. He let the kids grow up and be teenagers because there's a lot of pressure on him. Um, you know, I was there from 91 to 95, and as a father, he did a great job. It's just that he's out in front, and he's calling the shots, and, you know, he's really opened you know, the door for criticism, and uh, people are jumping on it. Well, Rick, we talked about the us-against-the-world mentality, and you know what? Sometimes that's not a bad thing. It's good for motivation. It's a way to challenge you and make you better, but is there a point where it becomes too much and you need to maybe pull back? Maybe it's holding him from back from even greater things? Um, I don't think so. You know, he's always had that Muhammad Ali, you know, us-against-the-world mentality. He's instilled that in the girls. They're great athletes. Uh, they're the prime players on the, on the tour right now. And uh, I don't think so. You know, someone said earlier, they're there to win tennis matches, not to make friends. So I don't think you can fault them for that. What people want to see is when they tee it up against each other, they just want to see their best effort. And I just think it's tough because they're so close, like two sisters have never been. You know, John, how about, would this be fair to say that maybe while the sisters are embraced by a lot of people right now, they're right on the edge of becoming villainesses of the sport if they continue this sort of behavior or perceived behavior in people's minds? Well, well villainous might be stretching it. They're, they're both immensely popular. There's no question about that. They really transport, they, they, they transcend the sport uh, more than any other athlete. I, I think, though, that we saw the other day when you have 15,000 people booing you, that's a bit of a concern, and I, I think the Williams sisters are sort of at this critical point right now where they're immensely popular, but a couple more ugly episodes like we had last week, and there might be some cause for concern. Let, right. me, let me jump in here. I, I think, you know, that's a good point, but what's going to happen is because of the allegations and because there's more accountability, I mean, these kids are going to play each other 20, 25 more times before it's all said and done, and they're a little more under a microscope, and if you would ever see their best efforts these two great athletes making shots from everywhere on this court, it's the greatest show on earth. So I think a lot of positive will come out of this or some negative could come out of it if they don't uh, 
you know, step up. Well, a lot of people are hoping we see it at Key Biscayne in the coming weeks. John Wertheim, Rick Macy, thanks for your time.